Hello everybody, Keith Tanner here from Fly Miata and I'm here to talk about failures. Well, that's not what I really intended to talk about originally. What I was originally going to talk, talk about was about a new product that we're trialing that we're, we're working on and I thought, oh, it'd be really fun is I'll build a test apparatus to show what it does and it didn't work and it didn't work again and at the time we started promoting this video all I had was a failed experiment. So I said, you know what? We'll talk about failed experiments. And there's a good reason for that. Because we do a lot of experimental testing at Fly Miata. Um, we want to make sure our products work. You, you, know, you can spend a lot of time messing around with spreadsheets, doing CAD work and stuff like that. But there's just no substitute for simply putting something together and testing it and seeing does it work. And sometimes those tests don't work. And you need to be able to tell, it, did it not work because you had bad data? Did it not work because your test procedure wasn't right? Or did it not work because simply it just doesn't work? And that's an important thing to know. Um, and so I figured I'd use my, my aborted science fair experiment that I have here on the desk in front of me um, to illustrate, Travis is about to make a lot of noise, uh, to illustrate the, uh, the thought process, basically. Um, so I will tell you what it was I was going to test out. This, sorry, Travis is in, the, in my workshop, and there's stuff falling all over the place. This is a bell mouth intake uh, for a two and a half inch brake duct. Um, the, the documentation is, the, the uh, literature is pretty clear. This, the computational fluid dynamics say that this should make a significant difference to the amount of air ingested by your brake ducts. And of course, that's good. You want lots of cooling air over your brakes. I've talked about brakes in the past. I won't get into those now. But you know, what I thought was, why don't we put one together and see how it works? You know, see if we can show off how well, how well this thing works. This is because you cannot get a universal 2 and a half inch bell mouth. I can't find one anyway, anywhere. So there you go. There's one right there, fresh off one of our Mark Forge 3D printers. Uh, we were playing with, uh, with print quality on it, so it's a little chunky around the edge trying to figure out the best way to print this. Because this thing is huge, it takes forever to print. This is like an eight hour print, I think. In a production setting, that's a long time. Anyhow, so I have this thing, and I started thinking, how is the best way to actually show this off? And try to think about what I have, what tools I have available to me, flow meters, stuff like that. And I will get to the failed experiments. Don't worry. We'll all talk. I'll tell stories about stuff from flying me out of failing. You know, that's what you want. You want everybody wants the, the carnage. But um, we're telling two parallel stories here. So I figured, you know what? I've got me out of airflow meters. They are designed specifically, it's in the name, to test airflow. So I'll open up the box. You don't want to see what's in the box. There we go. So what I did is I stuck one of these bell mouths, hello, on the intake for... 1.6 airflow meter. And then I put the intake in a box that contains, this is actually a bilge blower, this is off the target Miata, um, this was used as a defroster. Uh, for those who have watched Racing the Rock know that it didn't actually work very well as a defroster. Um, and set this up so I can turn it on and off. And then I put it all together. I apologize for what this is going to do the sound levels. And I can turn it on. And first off, I have to hold the top of the box down. But, stop, there we go. But it didn't even twitch the airflow meter. It didn't work at all. So I, these have a spring in them. I turned the spring down. I turned down the tension, tried to get it to move. I tested it with and without the, uh, the bell mouth, and I couldn't get any meaningful difference. So I know these work. You know, I've seen the CFD. It's, it's a well-known fact that property bell mouth intakes do improve airflow, but how can I prove it? And I, I kind of got a little bit obsessed over this. One thing I did was I turned this around. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's see if I've got all my parts here. Stuck this in here. This poor box has been through a lot. There we go. And just in case there was some weird airflow stuff going on, turn the fan around. So now it's an ex it's a exhaust fan and it's pulling a vacuum in the box. I don't know if that's the right piece. I don't think it is. Anyhow, you get the idea. I tried this. Turn it on again. It's all going to fall apart. And again, I didn't get anything. You can feel, well, if the inlet hadn't fallen off, um, you could feel this pulling in. That's the wrong 
piece. That's what it is. I used the wrong piece of cardboard. This is the right piece of cardboard. This goes in here. There we go. This is a very high-end experimental apparatus. Um, so this was the next try. Again, I couldn't get the uh, I couldn't get the readings I want. I was getting actual voltage off this. For those who want to see the experimental um, stuff, I'm measuring the resistance across two pins because this is basically a variable resistor based on position. Do do do. And as the flapper moves, this little arm moves back and forth. There's the little flapper moving inside, and I can get I can read exactly what that is with uh, with a multimeter. But you can also just plain see this thing moving, which is you know it's kind of fun. That's why I left the top off. Not working. Not working. Not working. Not working. So I figure you know maybe the spring is too strong. So whatever. I decided to get out my old friend. We've seen this guy before. The magnahelic gauge. Because, of course, what we're really doing is we're testing the pressure ratio. How, what's the pressure outside versus the pressure in the box? The lower the resistance, the higher the pressure in the box because it's easier for it to replenish itself. Um, and we went to the, I, I did go to the literature. This is actually how these are usually tested, intakes like this, um, is you, you set up a box with the lower pressure, you pull air through it, you test the, the relative pressures, and that pressure ratio gives you your efficiency. It also means I have a big dial that I can see stuff going on. So, hey, look at that. You can actually see. A little noisy. If I put my hand in front of this thing, I must have a massive leak somewhere because it's not pulling in. Yeah, there's almost no airflow through this thing. I've got to stick my hand inside to make a difference. So, something's not, something's not working right. Anyway, that didn't work either. So, is it a matter of these things just don't work at all, or again, is it experimental? So, this is the sort of thing you need to deal with when you're, especially when you know something should work, how do you deal with that failed experiment? And there's, like I said, there's three things that could be the problem. It could be bad data, too much noise in the data, say if this thing was bouncing around too much. It could be simply a, uh, a matter of a part that doesn't work. Um, or it could be a matter of you just don't have the test set up done right. And that's the sort of thing that we're trying to play with all the time. Um, for example, we did some testing a while back uh, with different spring shock setups on the ND Miata. Um, the ND Miata came from the factory with Bilstein shocks. Most of the, a bunch of the models did, the clubs did, for example. There's two different kinds of Bilstein shocks um, that they came with. Not many people know that, but there's a version one, a version two. And of course, we sell Coney shocks for these cars. And so we went to the track and we did testing with stock shocks, stock um, you know, the, the version 1 Coney's, the, the springs that went with them, the version 2 Coney's springs with them, we would put them on Fly Miata springs, we put them on, uh, we put them on Coney's, and Brandon and I spent a whole bunch of time driving around and around our local track, uh, instrumenting this whole thing. We had poor Kyle out in the, uh, out in the pits, swapping springs and shocks constantly on the, on the cars, and we didn't, we had too much noise in the data, as it turns out. Um, we we could feel some huge difference in how the car was working. Uh, both Brandon and I would come back in, we'd, we'd get our notes on what was happening, but it wasn't showing up in the times as dramatically as it was showing up from behind the driver's seat. And unfortunately, we were not able to, other than driving impression, we were not able to get a hard data out of that in terms of, you know, perhaps we could have got vertical loads going over a certain bump or something like that. Maybe we could have instrumented that way, but as it was, we didn't on that day come up with any good, any good information. And it's not just us that have problems like this. Um, one of my favorite magazines just published a test of inexpensive, mid-range, and high-end suspensions on a BMW. And it was sponsored by a BMW shop. And they went out to VIR, and they swapped in three different suspensions, but they didn't control their variables at all. Their alignments changed radically. Um, their data they published wasn't explained well, and it was just basically, it was, it was a poorly done test. They need to get stuff into print, so they published it anyway, but it was useless in terms of actual information. So we can't use that kind of thing. Um, we need to be able to work around it. Uh, I know one of the questions people have is, what are the best failures we've had of Flying Miata? And I hate to tell you we have not had big explosions with parts ricocheting all over the dyno run. We have never like blown the top off an engine. We've broken the odd engine. Um, Bill lost one back in the early 90s. Uh, I think we, we bent a rod in our 1999, back in 1999, um, before there was some engine management problems with that thing. Uh, and we lost an engine in the track dog race car. Um, 
oil contamination basically. Uh, that one we actually blew a rod to the side of the block, so it went boom, tinkle, tinkle. But generally speaking, it's been pretty quiet. Most of our failures are failures of the experiment itself, not stuff blowing up. Um, probably the most dramatic failure I've had personally was when I destroyed a carbon fiber drive shaft uh, on the road in our V8ND. Um, came out of a corner, got on it, medium hard, and the drive shaft just I would recommend if you are going to blow up a drive shaft, blow up a carbon fiber one because they just kind of splinter and you're not left with big aluminum or iron rods waving around underneath your car driving at drive shaft speed. So there's my, top, my tip for the day. Um, if you're going to break a drive shaft, break a carbon fiber one. So back to this thing. I did a little more work on the uh, little more research in the documentation and the literature and found out that this test setup Obviously, it's not usually done with cardboard boxes, but uh, this sort of test setup is usually done with about 28 inches of vacuum. Now, I don't know how big the inlets are in that particular case. It could be for jet engine size, but this thing is calibrated one, sorry, one inch of water, and we're supposed to have 28, so I'm just not pulling any air through it. And you can feel it. When you get your hand against this thing, there's just no air going through. So I tried a little more horsepower on the fan. You can see I've set this thing up to be modular. This goes over here. This is what my week has been. I've been doing this. There's all sorts of other stuff I should be doing, but I've been having way too much time playing with this experiment because I was going to win, damn it. Doo -doo -doo. Now we have a five horsepower shop vac pulling a vacuum on this thing. Let's see if this makes a difference. I apologize for the noise level. It's not pulling at all. Ah. I missed a step. That's what it was. I used to have the, uh, the flapper door. I had the spring completely disconnected to open it up. Anyway, trust me, didn't matter. Didn't make any difference. Um, stupid thing still. I do this maybe. It would pull a little more vacuum. That's right. That's supposed to go that way. Pull a little more vacuum, but again, it still wasn't working. And we realize that basically what we're dealing with is just a sense of scale. We can't pull enough air through this thing to test it properly. Um, you know, if this is on a brake duct, and I would love to somehow put an airflow meter inside a brake duct and go tear down our local track at 100 miles an hour and see how much happens. That's a little difficult to arrange. Um, so we scaled it down. I dropped Brandon a line, and I said, Brandon, I want you to make me a little one. So this is one quarter of the size. Um, it's a cute little thing. I, I want to come up with a good use for this. I don't know what I can do with it. And I have a brake hose simulator as well. Seriously, this is probably not what you guys signed up for. There's all sorts of people are probably signing in right now going, what the heck is this? What are we looking at here? Come on, in you go. There we go. Carefully designed. I'll get this failure out of the way. Excuse me, mister. Oh, that's still got brake calipers in it. That's heavy. Uh, as you can tell, this is done with whatever Keith could find in his shop. I want that on the inside. Yeah, it's going to suck itself on. There we go. So, you put this little guy in this pool hose. Look at this. It's a braking nut. How cool is that? This is, sort of, this is sort of a cross between check out this cool potential new product and testing. Okay, so we're seeing about 0.6 inches of vacuum, or inches of water. Crazy unit. If I take this off, okay, so it's on. It's off. It's on. It's off. So you can see this goofy little inlet. Come on over, look at this end of it, uh, Travis. So putting this inlet on, I'm reading the high end there is what, 90.9? I take it off again, and it drops down. And moving this hose, unfortunately, messes with it. I can do this directly. There we go. A lot of resistance. Less resistance. Quite a bit less, actually. 
Look at that. Oops. Okay, this is where I should have my... Now see, I only just got my hands on this little half size guy late in the day. Um, so I wasn't able to finally finish setting everything up and tape it up. Because this box needs to be sealed properly. I kind of poked a hole in it. Anyway, but you can see this little thing. Now that we have the airflow high enough, now that we have it scaled up so the Reynolds number is... Uh, look that one up, kids. It'll be fun. Um, but we actually were getting the airflow levels high enough to sort of activate this, uh, this flow. It's working. And you can see in the same sort of situation that you'd have with a brake duct, you could see a measurable difference in our pressure. And I, I keep banging on about relative pressures, but basically the better the pressure ratio, the more air you're gonna throw, th move through there. So we have proven that even a failed experiment, if you keep doing your research, if you keep trying to figure out what it is, playing with your experimental apparatus, you can prove that the thing is working. Sometimes we do prove that they don't work. Um, when we're doing radiator testing, when we developed our cross-flow radiator, which was the first widely available cross-flow radiator for the Miata, um, might have been the first one, period. Uh, we spent, poor Brandon locked himself in our dyno room with an engine that uh, we could set to a specific load, and he basically would run for half an hour and measure temperatures, how fast it came up. And we learned a lot of really interesting things about radiators because we had a very tightly controlled experiment. And some of the radiators that we had had specially built for this test completely and utterly fell on their faces. And that's an example of the experiment. You could look at it, did it go wrong or did it go right? Because this radiator did not perform. But luckily at that time we were testing a whole bunch of different radiators. So we were able to tell, well, these ones did perform, this one didn't. So we, did, we figured out why and we figured out what was different about them. And that's how we developed the cross flow radiator that we use with the very, um, the very tight mesh, the very high mesh uh, or fin density. Um, the thin core, you know, we did one that looks like the radiator when things should win. It's a triple pass, great big thing about that thick, massive, just sucked. It was terrible. Um, but it was because it didn't have the fin density. Uh, it, was, it was too thick, which increased the resistance for the air going, lots of reasons why it didn't work. But um, that failed experiment, you know, could have come across as a failed experiment or it could have come across as proof that the product didn't work. Um, I did have one question I wanted to answer in here. It was a very, very specific question. Uh, trying to fit an MB62 NB supercharger onto an NC, how difficult is it going to be? It's going to be very difficult. Those engines have nothing to do with each other. The intake is on the opposite side on the NC. Um, good luck with that, but all you're going to get out of it is a supercharger. I just, I had to mention that one because it was such an out of the blue question for a failed experiment thing. I think that might be a failed experiment. Anyway, good luck with that one. So, I'm just kind of riffing on this. You guys like to seem to like having crazy stories about stuff happening, and I'd love to say that we blow all sorts of things up. But we do, because we do a lot of, say, small-scale experimentation, um, because we're always doing crazy science fair experiments, such as literally chaining a car to the ground when it's up on a lift and then trying to bend it with a great big lever arm, um, that's the sort of thing you can do to show, to show torsion rigidity. It's like a big science fair here sometimes. Um, it's kind of a fault that we have. Sometimes we'll try a little too hard to test stuff when sometimes it's okay to just kind of say, you know what, here you go. This works for everybody else, so it'll work for us. We don't always do that. Anyhow, Belmouth's work. We just showed it. I can fire it up again if people want to see that and try to get a little more cleaner. Um, I can tape that, get a little more cleaner data. But uh, yeah, bell notes do actually work. A goofy little thing like this can improve the flow through a hole dramatically. If you ever open up the, uh, the intake, intake manifold for say an E39M5, for example, it's got eight bell mouths hidden in there. It looks like a bundle of snakes that are all going different directions, but they've all got that little bell mouth on the end. Um, fun little side, anyway. They also make a great noise when you take the intake man they take the plenum off the intake manifold. I highly recommend it. If you have an E39M5, take the plenum off, and you've got to at least rev it a little bit. So, oh, so good. Um, yeah, do we have any questions that popped up, Travis, or is everyone going, oh my God, what is he going on about? I haven't seen any questions. No questions, yeah. I'm not surprised. I mean, what can you really ask? Like, now that, now that everyone's answered what's in the box, which is a battery, a build pump fan, and a kill switch, um, you want to see again in the box? There we go. And if you don't know why this is in the box, um, you're going to want to watch this video again because uh, basically it's a, it's, a failed, it's a failed test apparatus. There was so many failed tester apparatuses. Apparati. So there we go. 
not a long story. Um, kind of a fun story. I might fire this up one more time. Let's tape this up. Let's see if we can keep it together. Here's my... Oh, there we go, the good stuff. Now I'm just messing around. This is more fun than working. Besides, where else can you see a guy testing bell mouse with a shot back? Only on Fly Miata. What is he trying to prove, everybody? Nobody knows. So this was my most recent leak was along here. Uh-oh. Now see, the nice thing about this is mostly self-sealing. So there we go, that thing will hold in place. Yeah. Maybe I'll tape that down a little bit too. Oh, I did have Travis, or I did have Brandon um, print this out for me. That's a cross section of what a properly designed bell mouth. Um, if you do any any googling around, any looking for literature on bell mouth intakes, you will probably come across this particular profile is elliptical. I forget the exact number, but this one has been proven with CFD to be the most efficient. Also, there's interesting stuff what's happening with the airflow. It it sort of meets its maximum peak down here, so I really should be testing it with a long hose. This one. Um, but yeah, it's great stuff to, to read about. There's some counterintuitive things. Inlets are, are interesting. NACA ducts are interesting. I could go on for a while about NACA ducts if you'd like. Do you know that all of NACA's um, research on things like the NACA ducts, they're public domain. Uh, you can download the actual patterns for a proper NACA duct. You can read all of the or original research that was done back in the 30s um, on a lot of this stuff because the research they were doing at that time is actually very applicable to race cars uh, because the speeds of aircraft were in the same range that we see on the track. Um, you know, reading about the hypersonic uh, wind tunnel testing is interesting, but not really very applicable to the sort of stuff that we do day to day. Um, and possibly not to the sort of stuff that you do day to day. I'm not saying anything about what it is you do for a living, but it's quite possibly that hypersonic uh, drag is not a function. So let's see if I can make this work again. Fire it up. So can we prove this work? Oh, look at that thing, it's pinned. Oh, we're past the edge of the... I need a different gauge. So now we're pulling too much vacuum for this gauge. Give me a second. Doesn't everybody have two of these? Maybe this one's got a different scale. I'll see if this works. <clears throat> it may not move enough. Whoa, look at that. So that's the hole. Here, I'll put it right here. Oh dear. Stop coming off. Should have used silicone hose. There we go, so that's the open hole. Now I plug this thing in. Look at that drop. That's huge. There we go. I'm looking forward to my science fair project my, the, with the judges come by. So that shows pretty, pretty well how well a bell mouth can make a difference to a duct. So if you are putting brake ducts in your track Miata and you've got a nice big flat air dam, the super Miata style, you need one of these. We'll have them available before too long. Um, yeah, these little guys, I'm not sure, I'd love to offer these too because they're so cute. I'm not sure what you'd do with them. Maybe you could improve your pool filter inlet or something. There's a piece of pool hose. I need to come up with a reason for that. Hmm. Anyway, thank you for your attention, everybody. Thank you for putting up with me rambling on about experimental processes. This is all the stuff that you should have learned in high school when you were paying attention in your, uh, in your high school science class. I hope you all learned it. I probably got a high school science teacher watching this who's crying right now. Um, one of mine. Anyhow, I'm sorry, Mr. Galt. Uh, so there we go. This, uh, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you have any, uh, any snarky remarks, um, feel free to put them in the comments. We may or may not respond to the snarky remarks, but we will respond to questions. And uh, we'll be back next week with something else, hopefully more interesting and more applicable to whatever your life involves <laughs> other than a box with a 3D printed hole.
Again, my name is Keith Tanner from Fly Miata. Thanks for your attention, and we'll see you again soon.